Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics. And today's video we are going to be looking at the string is digit method and how to solve this challenge with it. So alright, so if you're new here, thanks for joining us. This is what we do, we do little micro videos. So saw this very interesting question that was posed and then I realized that I have not done a is digit method. So let's just kind of just jump into that for uh, a second and then we will uh, handle this. So help on string. I want a dir on string, sorry. All right, is digit. <clears throat> so Python looks at the as key and we'll return back. Well, let's just look at it. Help, uh, str. I'm having a hard time typing today, so I apologize. This digit. We're not calling it. All right. So return true if the string is a digit string, false otherwise. A string is a digit if all characters. So let's give you some a pictures worth a thousand words. So is digit, so this is a method, dot notation, true. Then a is digit, false. And then the second part of it is all. So a one, so even if it's in the middle, is digit because not all of the characters are a digit, it returns false. So now the premise of this question was, it was, it was actually uh, more complex, so this is why I really wanted to delve into it. So including these two ends, so a digit as a string from 1,000 up to 999,999. It would test to see if it is a digit. So we want to have a test where this would pass, this would fail, this would pass, aha. This would fail because our comma is in the wrong location and then fail if this is given. So first of all, we need to handle if it needs to be longer than four length. So, all right? So, you might say, but that has four numbers. But that, we pressed a key to get the comma. So, let's look. Nope. Well, I guess that would have passed. So, that's a length of five. So, first, let's get started on our. Sorry about the weather, everybody. Is valid string. All right. So first of all, I want to show you two different ways to handle this problem. If len x greater than four and len x less than eight. I should have shown you this. So len do 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 nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. Close that out. What is the length? That's seven. So this is our max. So if it is has to, has to be less than eight. So that's our first test. Now I want to show you this. Can you see this? Okay. All right. This is one way to do this. Here's the second way, and this is one of the ways when I first started doing this, I needed to see this in my head to go from smallest to biggest. So I can do this on one line sequential. So for len x eight. So it's literally in between. So I'm going from smallest to largest. So I just wanted to show you this way. So now, now we need to handle, 
So that handles our size. So we have handled this and anything smaller than this. But we're gonna have another problem. This right here. So if we look at it, this from the front, we're gonna have a dilemma and it's gonna change. So if I index this comma for 1000, it's at index one. Now if I index this comma at, on this second one, I get it at index zero, one, two, three. So I'm gonna have multiple tests, but if I come at this from the negative indexing, negative one, two, three, four. Negative one, two, three, four, aha. So I will test for my comma if x negative four, and this will not change. It will be in negative four every single time. Negative four equals comma, let's be consistent. All right, now, now let's get into how we're going to use our returns. So T turn true. So let's, let's put this in and let's look at my test. So test zero is this. All right. Hmm. So test zero. Ah, I don't want you guys to see that. Test zero. Here we go. We'll index this. So T zero. There we go. So now if I index my T zero, T zero, let's play with this a little bit. So negative or all the way through three. Okay, wait a second. Let's work on negative indexing. So T zero, so negative three, what does this get me? Aha, so this gets me my back section. And then my negative four, I know that this is, now where, where's this T zero? through negative four. Let's slide this around. Aha, so this is my two. So this are going, these are gonna be my test cases to skip over because if I were to test this as a whole, if I were to test T zero as is digit, why is this going to fail? Because at index in this one, either negative four or one is a, is a non-digit, is a comma. So I need to split this. So now I'm going to return, oops, already have that. So X colon through negative four is digit. And then my other sequence, X, through from negative three on is digit. Aha, all right. So now I need, I got if, so I need else return false, else return false. Wow. All right. So then let's let's get going on my test uh, for I in test, and let's do let's let's do some pretty cool f string. F then placeholder I. I'm gonna do some padding here. I want ten. Close that out. Now, this is gonna look weird. I'm wrapping this in a string because once you do a placeholder here, it will turn it into ones and zeros. So I'm wrapping 
my return, my true and false, to a string. That's what I'm doing right here. Valid string that I'm calling i, and then I'm doing another padding. Wrap that up, and there we go. Now let's run this, and we'll go over a little bit more what I did. All right, so I'm padding 10, and my chevron, my uh, greater than, is saying align this. It, it will default, without that, it will align that to the left. I'm saying align it to the right. Still with 10 padding, I would just get my space, and it would look a little bit more disheveled. Then I want six, so that's my nice little space right here. Again, align on the right, and I want it here. Now, let's clean this up a little bit. So I want to show you this. These are both false, right? So if this fails, it will be false. If that fails, it will be false. And this will return whatever the results are. So I really don't need this. I also don't need this. So let's check. So that was true, that's false, that's true, that's false, and that's false because that's out of compliance, that's too long. So now let's check and compare and make sure we have the same result to test to see I know what I'm talking about because I'll delve into this just a touch more. Same results. So to remind you, once you hit a return in a function, everything else becomes dead code. So if I fail out here, unless I have, th this works unless I have different circumstance, if it's a true or a false, but since it was everything below here would return false, I only need one false statement. So there we go, guys. I thought this was a very awesome question, and especially since I did not have a uh, is digit method for any strings. So there we go, guys. Please drop any comments, questions, video requests. Please jump over on Discord. Please keep dropping the comments. You guys are doing a fantastic job. A little bit longer video uh, than normal, but I really thought this was a great question uh, to really be out there. But um, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, keep me up to date with everything you're working on, and I'll see you over on Discord. As always, guys, oh, make sure you're staying tuned, watch until the end, checking these videos out. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. And if you haven't, check out this video right here or this one right down here. And most important, make sure you're hitting this subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.